हेलो 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 I can hear you, Amit. Yeah, hi, Monica. Hi. So, are you able to see my screen? Yes, I could see that. Okay, okay. So, Monica, I am. I will be your MSB trainer. Okay, and okay. as you know my name, my name is Amit Jain, and I have around four years of experience in development, basically in MSBI. Okay, and mm -hmm. around more than three years in the training part. Okay, I have okay. done a lot of project in MSB, which basically in SIS, AS, SRS. Develop various ETLs mm -hmm. for some of the companies and develop some of the cubes as per the requirement of the clients. Okay, and also created various SRS reports. Okay. So this is just a brief about me. So can you tell me about yourself? What are you pursuing currently? Uh, I just finished my master's and uh, I'm just looking for some job over SSIS, so I have been here in your training. Okay. I did my master's in computer science. Oh. Okay. Uh, so you basically, you are a fresher. Yes. Uh, so what more more motivates you to start your career with MSBA or database? Uh, the thing is like uh, I'm a graduate from January so I've been looking for a job from then and uh, I have been learning online and uh, I have learned a tool called Informatica online just the uh, you know the basics because I ha I was uh, ready to attend an interview for a junior developer so in that case I just kept learning so when I uh, reach these guys they say that uh, you know when you know uh, part of Informatica and SQL and all stuff maybe you have to go ahead and try something which is related to data warehousing or, and databases and all stuff so so that made me get into this training okay okay great and uh, do, do you have any idea about say, SQL server how does it works how to write queries queries and all how to I get like um, I can write queries on SQL, uh, you know, the normal general queries to update, delete, create, join, and all stuff. Not, not, not in a higher level, but uh, you know, I know the basics of it. Okay, okay. So before that, have you done any course of SQL Server? Have you learned anything in your yeah. master degree? Uh, in my Back in your, country, I took some training. Your voice, your voice is breaking, so can you please repeat the last sentence? You know, like in masters, I didn't take anything on database, but uh, uh, back in my country when I was doing my undergraduation, I, I just took some training on different uh, sectors, the, just the basics, like the SQL developer and different uh, Java and .NET and all stuff. Okay, so you also have some basic of .NET concepts. Yes, yes. That's very nice. That's very nice. Because in MSBI that might be required somewhere to know some of the basics of .NET and to have a good knowledge about SQL Server. Okay, okay. 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 <coughs> so let's start with MSBI and SQL Server. Basically, every company have the information or that we can say every company have the data. 
okay so every contains the data or every company stores the data okay so to store the data in a proper way in a managed way we the we people or the company have to use various database management system tools these are called dbms tools okay so microsoft sql server we can also say it at dbms tools one of the dbms tool which helps us to store the data or to manage the data into the relational format relational format represents the tables or or we can say a row and column format every data or every piece of information is stored as a table in a, your microsoft sql server okay now you know that you can manage the data or you can store the data in microsoft sql server now another another task comes here is the automation system actually database is a regularly updating activity or regularly coming from various sources suppose a departmental store maintains the data of their customers so on the daily basis they might be getting new customers they might be getting new sales transactions so now they have to regularly update their database okay so for regularly updating the data or to automate the process of populating the data or regularly inserting the data or managing the data for the population process microsoft have given us another tool that is ssis sql server integration service SSIS is also called an ETL tool. As you have told that you have worked on Informatica. Informatica yeah. is also an ETL tool. Yes, I do. Okay. In the Informatica, you can see ETL is basically E stands for extraction. Transformation. E stands for transformation. and l stands for loading extraction we present to extract the data from some of these source these sources can be your txt file this can be csv this can be your excel these can be your tables oracle or ms sql server okay when you extracted the data now you have to load it into a destination you can transfer the data into txt file csv file and or your and microsoft sql server data tables or oracle data tables okay in between we have another thing that is transformation transformation represents that to manipulate the data in between when you have extracted the data from the data source okay so before populating the data uh, are you aware about the term population populated Mm, yes, I do, but uh, I have no idea on it. Like I just heard it. Basically, as a we people works in a company or any company in profession, some argument to uh, transfer the data into database is called as population or populating the data. Okay. Inserting uh, is a type of inserting the data. Okay. Okay. So when you are going to populate the data into a database. Okay, so uh, you have extracted the data from the source. Now you have to populate the data into the destination. So before this population part, there might be some requirement that it, that data have to be changed. So so these changes can be held by the transformation part. Okay, uh, Monica, I'm just giving you a brief about three of the tools of MSBI. Okay. Then we will be starting our SIS part. Uh, uh, a simple example of RSS. Mm -hmm. Okay, so SSIS basically helps us to perform this ETL operation. Okay, in SSIS we have various things. One is control flow.
control flow controls all the activities in your SIS. Control flow is a runtime engine which helps us to coordinate all the tasks of your ETL process. Next is the data flow. Data flow is basically your ETL part where you will be performing extraction, transformation and loading. Next is event handler. There are various events associated with each and every task. So to do any handling for any event, then we have event handler. Okay. All of these concepts will be covering in our SIS class. In control flow, we can have various tasks. These tasks, one, one of the main tasks is the data flow task and another task can be there to perform various ETL specific operation like uh, to move file from one location to another to uh, call any exe before populating the data into database some of the tasks and even not some of the many tasks are being supported by SIS in control flow in data flow you will be having three things source destination and transformation for performing the ETL Okay, next we have event handler to handle all the events of SIS. Okay, so with these functionalities, we also have some of the advanced functionalities which will be shared by you when you will be starting, when we will be having more classes. Okay, so this is just a brief about SSIS. Okay, now let's take an example for another tool of MSBI that is SSAS. It stands for SQL Server Analysis Service. Okay. Suppose a company CEO wants to expand his business. Okay. Then he asks his managers or his subordinates to give him a piece of information that helps him to expand his business or to cut down his business expenditures in some of the areas. Okay. Then he starts analyzing the data of their business. Okay. He starts analyzing the data by analyzing the sales figure. So he asks his manager or his subordinate to give him a sales figure. So currently his manager give him a sales figure like 100 or we can say 100 millions. Okay. As he, he can see that 100 millions is his total sales amount. till the date. But this piece of information will not help him to do a deep analysis of the data. So now he asks his subordinates again to divide the data according to years. As they might be running their business from last five years, so he asks his subordinates to divide it according to each and every year. Suppose his, his subordinates is giving him data like 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 20, In first year 10 million, then 10 million again, then 15 million, So this piece of information might be somewhat useful for him. He can see that in the initial phase of their business, they have they had very low amount low amount of sales. As in 2011, their sales figure was of 10 million, then 10 million. In 2013, it got increased by five. And to, in 2014, it get increased by 20, and now current year is 2000, 
15, it is the mid of the year, we can see that till the mid of the year, their sales amount is very good. It is 30 million. Okay. We can see that the health of their business is very good. Okay. But with this information, he also wants to do more analysis. He again asks his subordinates that they are working for four products. They are basically manufacturing or dealing with four products. To, so to divide the data according to the products. Then A, B, C, D. These four products are there, and there can be any sales figure according to these products and years. Okay. So on the basis of that, he can analyze which particular product is performing very well and each, which particular product is not performing at all in all these years. Okay, So on the basis of this he can see that if a particular product is not performing at all then he can uh, cut down the production of that product or if he see that there is a lot of demand for a particular product then he can uh, expand the manufacturing for the or he can increase the volume of manufacturing of that product. Okay, so on the basis of that he can do analysis. So with this information he also wants to go more deeper. Then he again asks his subordinates that they are operating in various geographical areas. So to divide this information according to various geographical areas. Okay. Suppose they are working in, for in India. Okay, suppose they are working for these geographical regions. So he, he, he can see that for a particular region or for a particular product, they are getting a lot of demand. Or, or he can see that for a particular product they are not getting uh, any demand in a particular area. So he can also cut down this uh, the promotion and all the expenses doing for that product in that particular area. Okay. So let's see from the beginning when we have started doing the analysis. From the first part of the analysis he only get this hundred millions. Okay. And then he start doing analysis by time, then by product, then with time, product, and geographical area. Okay. So on the basis of these subject areas, he is doing the analysis. So in a sense, AS term, these subject areas are called as dimensions. And he is doing analysis on sales figure, these numerical facts. And these numerical facts are called as measures. Basically, SSAS is also called as dimensional modeling. where a person is going to do analysis on the basis of various subject areas or on the basis of various dimensions. In this current scenario, we have taken only three dimensions, but there can be many, even more than 100 dimensions for the analysis. So doing these dimensional analysis is not possible with our SQL server. Okay, So a separate server is maintained by our Microsoft, that is SSAS. SQL Server Analysis Service. So the database for maintaining such type of analysis is also called as OLAP database or we can also say it as Q. Sometimes people also say it as a data warehouse. 
as it helps us to do historical analysis. So basically, when we will be developing a SSA solution, we will be developing a cube solution where we will be creating our dimensions and our measures. And we will be defining the relationship of all dimensions and measures. So this is just a brief about SSAS. And the last part is your SSRS. Are you aware about SSAS before that? Have you ever no. studied something? No. Okay. Uh, have you ever uh, heard about cube concept or dimensional modeling? Mm, I heard about dimensional modeling. Okay, great. Okay. And the last part of MSBI is your reporting part. Or we also say that a presentation part. We can maintain the data into a relation format or into a cube format. Okay. But there is no use of data until it is in the presentable form or until it is it is presented to our users or our end customers or our clients. Okay. End users can only see the data by this presentation presentation part or the reporting part. So in SSRS, we can create various types of reports. It can be a table report. It can be a matrix report. Even we can also create various types of graphs. Okay. The most interesting part of SSRS is that we can create schedules or we can automate the delivery of reports to clients. Okay, suppose you have created some report in SRS and you have deployed that report to the SRS server. Okay, if the requirement is that you have to regularly give the report to your client or customer, okay, then you can create a schedule for that. Okay, and then automatically this schedule will mail the report to the client or can store the information to a particular location as per specified in that schedule. Okay. So this is just the basic of MSBI. Okay. Now uh, as in the starting of the class I have asked you one question that what motivates you to join MSBI? Okay. You have told yes. me that there are various jobs in MSBI. Okay. The reason for uh, the popularity of this MSBI is that it have given all these three tools SIS, SSAS and SRS in one single pack and with the database. If you have uh, Informatica then you can only work with the ETL. You cannot yeah. do the reporting. You cannot maintain the database into uh, Informatica. You cannot develop a cube solution. Mm -hmm. Okay, same is the case with the other tools. Oracle is a big competitor for uh, uh, MS SQL Server, but uh, Oracle uh, is far costlier, is very costlier as compared to your Microsoft tool. Okay. So my uh, the strategy, market, marketing strategy of Microsoft is very good. Okay, uh, uh, they have maintain a very low cost for their product so that each and every company can easily buy their products. And their support part is also very good so that a company can easily afford them and can if if any of the developer face any problem while working on a tool, they, the developer can get a solution very easily from the Microsoft sites. Okay. So uh, that's why the MSBI part is very popular. So, uh, will we be learning the, the whole of MSBI, that means SSIS, AS and RS together? Yes, yes. Okay. So, okay. Uh, the, now we will be starting the main class. So, till now if you have any doubt or if you want to ask any question, then you can ask to me.
uh, like do we have to know something else before uh, going ahead for this like the SQL uh, querying or anything else? Uh, in the starting of the class, I have asked you a lot of questions. Uh, yes. How much you have learned enough? Okay. Yes. Uh, you so, have the basics of .NET framework. You know yeah. SQL Server yeah. uh, joins and all, and queries yeah. and all. Yes. Okay. So base all, basically all these things are required for MSQL developer. Okay. To learn. Okay. And do you have Microsoft SQL Server Enterprise Edition? Installed on your on on your machine? I don't think so. I have an enterprise edition, but uh, yeah, can you uh, do, have you ever worked on SIS ASRS on your system? No, no, no. I have no idea that till now. I, I think the first time I'm listening on this. Which version you are having of SQL Server? Uh, I think 2010. 2010? Yeah, I think so. Uh, no, no, no. It will be a Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, but it not be a 2010 SQL Server. Because there is no version of SQL Server with 2010. You might be having 2008 or 2012. I think as of now, for now, I have nothing in my uh, system right now. Maybe I have to okay. install. Yes, you have to install them. I have Microsoft SQL Server 2012 installed on my machine. Okay. Okay. And I think you also need to install SQL Server 2012. And that is addition. I have pinged you. Okay. Okay. So now can we start the first class? Yes. So we will be starting with SSIS. In the first class, I will be uh, sh sharing a very small scenario with you to load the data from a txt file to the, your database. Let's open the database. Now. Suppose I am having this table, M data. Okay, this is having two fields, full name and net cell. Okay, I am creating a notepad over here. Tab separate file. I'm getting a source. Suppose from my source, I'm getting the data as Amit Jain, net salary will be five thousand dollars. Suppose this is my data. I am regularly getting this data from my source. Okay. Now I have to develop an ETL to migrate the data of this TXT file to my table. Okay. 
table is my database and this file is my own my desktop. So for this I will be creating a solution that is will be SQL Server Data Tools. MSBI tool in SQL Server 2012 is represented as SQL Server Data Tools in 2008 version and in 2005 version it was represented as Microsoft Business Intelligence Solution. Come to the file menu, click on new, new project. Okay, we have to work on integration service. Uh, now, uh, this time I will be working for integration service project. Okay, and over here I will be giving a path of the solution where it will save the project. Click on integration service project. So this comes up the UI of your SSIs. In the right hand side we can see the solution explorer with various folders. In the main is the SIS package which holds all the packages of your SIS. Okay. The executable part of your SIS solution is called as package or a DTSX file. You do, you maintain or you create all the tasks in a single package and can use this package to get executed for populating the data. So, so the development environment for a developer for SIS is the package. Okay. In a single, so this is your complete solution. In a single solution you can create multiple packages. Right click on this folder, new SIS package then you can add a package over here. Currently, uh, we have to work on the single package, so I am working over here. So, a package over here, we can see different tabs are there. Control flow, data flow, parameters, event handlers and package explorer. In the bottom part, we have connections managers. So, could basically, to perform the ETL, for performing the ETL, you have to get the data from the source and to transfer the data to the your destination. So for getting the data from the source, you must be connected with that particular source. And for transferring the data to destination, definitely you will also again have to get connected with the destination. So for connecting with the source and destination, you must have various connections. So the, all these connections are managed in this connection manager. Various types of connection can be there. OLEDB, flat file, edu.net, analysis service connection, file connection, new connection. Okay. Uh, if any time uh, in the meanwhile the class in the class, if you get if you need if anything is not understandable to you, then you can stop me at that time. Okay. Okay. So this is the control flow. As I have already explained, control flow is basically your runtime engine, or it for it handles all the tasks of your SIS package. SIS package is not only for performing the ETL, but you can also perform various other tasks with your SIS package. SIS is basically a very powerful tool for various operations. Suppose if you if your data source provider gives you the data file to your FTP, okay, then you have to load the data of these FTP files to your destination. Okay. Then what you have to do? First of all you have to copy all the files from your FTP to your some common location or to your some shared location. Then from shared location you have to copy all these files to your local location. 
suppose these files are the zipped file you also have to unzip it then uh, when you have unzipped it then you have to transfer the data to your destination okay when you have unzipped the file now you have the files in the txt format then you can easily transfer the data from that txt format to your destination by the data flow okay but before transferring the data before when uh, before getting the file in the txt format you also have to do various operation the first operation is to uh, get the file from the ftp another operation is to copy the file to a local location and another operation is is to unzip the files okay so basically these four operations are called task these task can be performed by various inbuilt task of your control flow the first operation to copy the file from ftp to your uh, common location will be done by your ftp task then the second operation to copy the file from uh, that common location to your local location will be done by your file system task then another task is for uh, calling the ngb.exe then you can call any exe another window exe from your sis by using execute process task and the last part is populating the data from that source exe file to your destination this is done by the data flow task i have dragged and dropped that data flow task to this surface okay now i am clicking right clicking on this click on edit when i have click on edit i we get jump from control flow to the data flow okay so in our scenario we have this file m data this is our flat file this is our source and this is our destination m data destination is our relational database okay now we have to transfer the data from that text file to this table okay so for this first of all we must have the connections the first connection will be your source flat file flat file connect okay so i just right click on right click on the file connection manager and then click on flat flat file connection manager give it a name that file source you can give it a description if you want specify the path and data okay so this file is a delimited file it's a tab delimited file okay format i have specified it delimited delimited okay header row delimiter header rows to skip column name in the first data row i will tell you this header row delimiter okay. let's come to the columns row delimiter and column delimiter row delimiter specifies how that tracks get into the next line how the my flat file will come to know that there is the start of the next line okay in this scenario in this case the next row will start from a from the enter that is the line feed okay when we press enter then it shows it's a line feed okay row delimiter is the line feed carries return or line feed represents the next line okay column delimiter is the tab it's the tab yeah. so on the basis of that it have recognize these two columns okay and it have in the preview part we can see its data okay now i'm clicking on okay now our next connection will be for oledb to connect with our database click on new specify the database name server name and database name 
test collection click on ok okay now we have the connection for flat file source and a connection for your destination yes. now in this now we are in the uh, data flow tab okay so in the data flow tab we have three things source transformation and destination okay. so let's work with the source our source is the flat file source and our destination is the OLEDB destination. Let's connect this flat file source with the flat file connection. Then let's see the column. Click OK. We can see that we have when we have configured it, it's a red mark or this question red question mark red cross mark is removed from there. Let's connect this flat file source with OLEDB destination. These connectors in the data flow are called as data paths. It, rep it represents how the data flow from a source to a destination. Okay. Now we have connected it with it with OLEDB destination. Double click it. Give it a bind it with a connection manager. Over here, give it a table name. Table name is M data. Let's do the mapping. Okay. Now it is giving us an error. Column full name cannot convert between Unicode and non-Unicode string data types. Do you have any idea about Unicode and non-Unicode strings? No. Uh, basically, Unicode strings are universally acceptable. Okay. And non-Unicode strings are considered as to be a program specific. Okay. And the data in the Unicode string will be accepted by each and every language. Okay, so, so the data type with, with n var char is considered to be unicode string and data type with just a var char will be considered as a non-unicode string. Okay. So this is the difference between unicode and non-unicode string. So over here we can see full name is n var char. This is the unicode. Okay. So let's see the data type for uh, the source. Double click on the flat file source in the connection manager. Comes to the advanced page, advanced tab. When I see the data type for full name, this is string. String represents as the non-unicode string. Let's convert it, uh, it in the unicode string. I have converted it to the unicode string. I'm clicking on OK. Now refresh this flat file source. Output, there's a change in this column click on yes it gets refreshed Close. okay now that question mark have been removed from there let's see the let's now let's see the data before executing this package there is no data into this now we have to execute the package there is a run button or start debugging button or you can also press F5 from your system to execute this package from this solution now I am executing the package Clicking on this run button. This green mark shows that this particular task gets successfully executed. Basically, we get three types of status. One is the green mark, which is the success. One is the yellow mark, this which represents that this task is in progress, and one is the red mark. It represents that there is some error in this task. Okay, so two rows have been transferred from this data data path from source to destination. Mm -hmm. Now let's see the data. Okay, we can see that we have the data into our table. Yeah. If you compare it uh, this task with your Informatica, didn't you find it very easy? Yeah. I have also uh, done a, a small task on Informatica around mm -hmm. before around two years. Okay. okay. And that was with the Unix system and your Informatica tool. 
but uh, uh, I think there for developing a small package, we also have to do a lot of settings for yes. working with Informatica. So how much you have worked with you Informatica? Know, I, I didn't work on it, but you know, I just found some videos and all stuff online and I kept learning, just knowing it. But I didn't have a real-time practice or something on the tool. I have seen in my cousin's uh, system, he's working on Informatica, so I have just seen uh, small transformations, just converting from flat to database, uh, like the same you did. Okay. Get hands. So in this task, we only have work for flat file source and your destination. Now, let's change this scenario. Suppose our file format is in this format. First name, last name, salary. Suppose this is the format of our source file, first name, last name, salary and deductions. But yeah. in our destination, we have format as full name and net salary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have to populate the data into this format. So formula for transferring the data or formatting the data will be first name plus last name will be equal to your full name and salary minus deductions will be your net salary. Okay. So let's perform transformations now. First of all let's change the format of your flat file. Okay, now we all have to add two columns or we can also reset the columns. First name, last name, salary and deductions. This is the format of our source file. Click OK. That's up to the data flow task. We have to modify our data flow task. First name, last name, salary and deductions. There are some mapping errors on this path. There is no full name in this method. So let's disconnect it first of all. Okay. Now we have to 
convert first name and last name to full name and salary and deductions to your net salary okay so now we have to derive some value from the given formula the formula for the derived column will be derived column will be a full name and the formula for this will be first name plus last name yeah and another derived column will be your net salary and the formula will be salary minus deduction okay first of all let's see the data type of your salary and deductions column it have to be a numeric one okay so let's come to the sis tool box and let's see the transformations we have various commonly used transformation over here in this commonly used transformation we have one transformation named as derived form drag and drop it connect the output of flat file source to the derived column right click on this click on edit okay now we have to apply the formula in the expression first name plus a blank space plus last name is it understandable yes yes sir give it a name as full name now let's have a, another column that shall be salary minus deductions click okay now let's connect the output of derived column with the already be destination this is giving us a board name it's not the error just a board name full name is being connected with full name that cell is connected with that cell yeah. the warning is due to the reason that the data length for full name is 50 okay and the data length for your first name and last name is 50 plus 50 that is 100 okay so this is now this is con considering it as data length will be 101 50 of first name 50 of last name and one is of blank space so it is saying that if the uh, data comes beyond the length of 50 then the your already be destination will truncate that data yeah. okay now let's execute it again there are some build errors we would like to continue no by another process I think there's some error with this solution. Let's get a new solution over here. Is it the error because we are doing on the same project? I don't know. Uh, when we when we have means previously when we will be developing that package, it gets hanged somewhere. Okay. It, this is my system issue. Now we have to add the existing package in into our solution. I'm right clicking on this folder, add existing package.
ब्राउज़र से भी it might it might be that i have to restart it again okay but um, there we can find the solution right in the database saying that our first name the full name got attached with the first name and last name and the other after deducted we got the result yes Can you hold on for a moment? Uh, Please hold on.
So Monica, do you have any question for this? Uh, for now, I have no questions. I'm good. Down it. Okay. I will be opening an existing solution. Let me try if this package is working there, that solution or not. Okay. The solution is working fine. Okay, so in this task, we have used a derived column transformation. Okay, previously, if you remember when we have designed, yes, you were saying something? Uh, I said yes, I understood. Okay, uh, so when we were designing this package, Previously, we have got one error that error was of Unicode and no Unicode string. Yeah. So, to rectify that error, what we have done, we just go to the flat file source and change this data type from there. Hmm. First name is str, last name is str, salary is numeric and reductions. And the derived column. It is by default it have converted it to Unicode. Okay. Now suppose in our database our M full name in M data is of non Unicode string. Is the error column full name cannot convert between Unicode and non Unicode string data type. Okay, because derived column is Unicode giving out as Unicode. Now we have to convert this Unicode string to non Unicode. For such type of data conversion, we will now we have to use another transformation. That transformation is your derived column. Sorry, sorry. That transformation will be your data conversion. Because we have to change the data type. So, directly name, we can't uh, change the destination one? We can change the destination. Can but still, it from it, here. Yeah, if it it is like in some scenarios, if the destination is fixed to be non-unicode, then you have to go for this conversion, right? Yes, yes. If the data type is not matching with your source and destination, then we have to go with this data, data conversion. conversion. Okay. Okay. Let's convert it to non-unicode string. We can also modify its length. Okay. 
Just hold down. Take some error. The reason for that error was any data uh, conversion, it have added a new column with the co name as copy of full name. Now in the validity destination, I have done its mapping with copy of full name. Now let's execute it again. Okay. It gets executed. Let's see the data. Okay, we can see the data. Here. Okay. So as we are running it again and again, so while running it again and again, it is entering a duplicate entry into the table. So our scenario is that before executing this data flow task, this table must have to be truncated. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for this, we have to write some SQL command before inserting the data into the database. Okay. So for writing some of the SQL command, in control flow, a size toolbox have provided us a data flow task. This is a data flow task. Let's con sorry. Execute SQL task. So to run any SQL command, we will be using SQL, execute SQL task. So this is the this connectors in control flow are called as precedence constraints. It defines that after this task this task have to be started. Okay. Uh, when this task gets completed, then only this task has been started. We will be learning about precedence constraints. Precedence constraints are a very important part of our SIS. We will be learning about it later on. Okay. Let's configure this execute SQL task. Right click on this, click on edit. First of all, give it a connection name, then a SQL statement. SQL statement will be concave table and data. I think this is a table, yes. Okay, now let's execute it again. Now let's see the data. There is only two entries in this. Okay. So did you get it or still you have or you did you have any question for this class? No, I'm I'm good on it. Okay. okay. I think we must stop it here and in tomorrow's in next class, I think it will be on coming Monday. We will be covering uh, one another scenario for our class. Okay. Okay. Let me see when she's there. Now, next task for you is to uh, install SQL Server into a machine. Okay. Okay, then try all these things. Hmm.
या थैंक यू अमित ओके या थैंक यू मोनिका हैव अ गुड डे टुडे मीट यू ऑन द मंडे विल वी विल मीट यू ऑन मंडे हेलो मोनिका या या ओके सो सैटरडे संडे इज हॉलिडे सो विल मीट ऑन मंडे द सेम टाइम यू कैन यूज द सेम इनविटेशन थैंक यू एंड हैव अ गुड डे ओके अमित कांटेक्ट अमित थैंक यू ओके वंशी हैव आई नीड टू टॉक समथिंग विद यू आई एम सॉरी आई हैव टू टॉक विद यू can we talk it on phone what what is that i i will be calling on your number when when sure sure yeah thank you okay okay bye bye all bye bye monica